to come to this week edition of Ask Your MP right from Parliament of Uganda, courtesy of Wizards Foundation. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, finance, I mean campaign financing, and with me I have Honorable Sampala, will introduce himself to you, or the roles he has in Parliament and any other role that he has. You're welcome to the show, Honorable. Thank you so much. I'm simple like Igozi Emmanuel, Sajjari Awene. I'm a teacher by profession and I'm the area MP in the Sarago municipality. Uh, in Parliament, I sit on the first factor committee and the rules and the regulations. Uh, yeah. Yes, Honorable. Um, on 11th of December last year, or 2018, mm. uh, Electoral Commission Chairman uh, Mr. Simon Bia. Bakama yeah. lodged in certain complaints. In fact, he launched the 2020-2021 uh, roadmap to election, and at the same time, he appealed to to parliament and government to work on the laws that were recommended by the Supreme Court. So what were those laws that were recommended by the Supreme Court to be worked on? You know, it is interesting. Um, the electoral laws that are in place do not, uh, are not uh, allow the people to play on the level ground. Uh, first and foremost, uh, the electoral commission is uh, appointed actually during elected by the president. And of course, if she's the president that elects the, the, the electoral commission, they'll go to pay allegiance to him. Now, <clears throat> we had wanted the electoral laws to change such that the electoral commission would be uh, uh, put in place by some process where all the uh, participating agents and parties would be part of that. And so that at the end of the day, if there is a problem, the electoral commission would be uh, answerable to that group. But today it is only answerable to the president, and that is that makes it very difficult. It would also reduce the powers of the president in some areas, like for example, he appoints the judiciary, he appoints the IGP, and all those people are very crucial and uh, key people in the electoral processes of Uganda, making it uh, a sort of one person activity. One of the issues that uh, that is supposed to be worked on is the issue of use of money during campaign. Mm. Uh, before we answer Gabriel's question, um, what is the implication of unregulated use of, uh, I mean, unregulated uh, law concerning uh, uh, election in Uganda? Uh, what is that? Can I say it? I mean, let me, let's first go to the question. Oh, this couple is asking you how much. How much they use to become an MP? Yeah. Uh, well, I didn't actually use as much as my friends used, the ones that were competing with me. And this is because mm -hmm. I've uh, been in, in, in the, in the electoral, I've been in the leadership positions right from about 1990 when I was councillor at the district and uh, I was also sort of finance and planning, LC3, to change. I've been chairperson of 2 and I've been doing a good job. So I, I think he didn't use more than um, about 150 million. Yeah. About that, yes. So, how can a contestant successfully engage his voters without spending? No, you, you know, it's interesting, yeah, and of course, it depends on the on the on the constituency. Constituencies around cities and around uh, uh, the urban centers, the people are informed and they, they know what they want. Like, for example, in my constituency, if you handle the infrastructure problem, people will be happy. But in the villages, infrastructure might not be a problem. Yeah. Yeah, there could be the levels of poverty could be so high that so giving somebody certain thousand could you know be moving or something like that. So it actually depends on where you are. Uh, but then of course uh, in my constituency the best thing that can happen is that you need to be very clear, you need to know what the people want and handle it. For example, today, uh, we are handling the roads, uh, the, the tarmacking of roads and widening the roads, putting marum on roads. I'm fighting for Sawara Road and the other day when I was assured by Yunla that they are going to definitely start tarmacking that road this year. 
we now have the other road on uh, this, uh, this, uh, this road, the uh, Unamoya Road. And we are also tamaking the Leji Road. We have started another one in Mushumbe. Now, that one gives you the right. And uh, apart from the, uh, the few people who are moved by you know, the, the wind, it would be easier for you to actually win. And that is exactly what happened in my case. I had the six or five other contestants and were asking them, what have you done? This gentleman has been here, he has been doing this, he has been doing that. And uh, I, I won. Yes, um, Supreme Court recommended against donations and regulations and fundraising. Mm. Then how does it affect um, engagement <coughs> with your voters? You know, it is interesting. Campaign funding, in my opinion, is in two parts. Uh, the first part is the, what I would call the official part. And this is uh, where you have the, you, you need to print posters, where you need to have a public address system, where you need to have campaign teams facilitating them to move, uh, feeding them. Uh, you know, having the legal framework in place, nomination fees, and you also have to do some printing. Those are more expenses that one would, uh, would definitely have to use. But then there is also another campaign funding which is extremely too much, and that one starts almost the day you are elected an MP. Like for example, right the day now. you elected an MP. Yes, it starts right from then, because as soon as you are elected today, tomorrow people will come with children and they say. Uh, my child is out of school, can you help me? And I think to me that is campaign funding. Yeah. Because if I was not an MP, if I was not post campaign, post something like that. Yeah. Because if I was not uh, anticipating uh, coming to coming back, then I would not spend the money. Yeah. I'll just do the job that I'm supposed to do. And then I'll keep quiet. You do, you have to attend fundraisings in churches. In my constituents, I've got uh, 29 Catholic churches, 27 Protestant churches. I've got 67 mosques. I've got uh, I don't know how many bonnet and churches, and you are expected to attend into your fundraising and things like that. You have to uh, finance the funeral services. You know, you have to uh, fund the health facilities. Some people you have fall sick and you, you don't know what to do. You give loans to people for economic uh, empowerment or something like that. And to me, that is the biggest problem. So how best can we cut this? What I would expect is that the laws should be enacted that uh, prohibit people from demanding for that. But then at the same time, even if the laws are made, if there's no good will on top, like it is now, I don't think it will work. Because in my opinion, my personal opinion, I think this campaign funding has been orchestrated by the president, by the present government. And I think there is a, a, a deliberate effort to make people poor, and then uh, so that uh, the, the only fund those people they want to go into politics, and then the others cannot cannot manage, and uh, that one makes it very difficult. Like for example, uh, today uh, it's it's very very difficult for uh, an opposition MP. If you have not been doing the, the other things that have been that I've said, and to, to clearly go through without money, it's very difficult. And you find that uh, the other side has the money. Even the funding of the party activities is skewed in such a way that the party that has the biggest number in parliament gets the biggest share of the campaign of, of, the, of, the, of the money that government funds, uh, for party, which I think is not fair. That means that the strong party will, all, will remain strong because that the money does everything. Now, how do you expect the young one to grow if she doesn't have even facilities to print its own way, to facilities to move? Because where NR, when if NRM has got to move around the country, uh, a democratic party has got to move around the country. If this has got to move around the country, so the moving should be funded the same way, just like NRM. And then, after we have moved and talked to the people, then the people will say, yes, this one is better, that one is better. But you have not given me the funds. You have not allowed me to move to that place. I have not been funded. How do you expect to make my message to be clear? So people, I mean, the government is deliberately making people poor, is deliberately uh, refusing to fund party activities in order to make sure that they remain in power 
because they have the money and that is extremely very very bad it's extremely very bad and it's creating an anarchy in the in the country and we don't know where we are we are living where we are heading for Yes, honorable as the viewers are already asking you questions, yes. you have a number of questions to respond to. Okay. In your view, uh, is 150 original for a campaign to be LMP? Apparently, yes. 150 under normal circumstances. Of course, if they, unless, of course, if you, the, the campaign period is long. But with the budget that I had, because my initial budget was about 100 million, and then about 50 million. The, that one funds the uh, uh, later activities of the campaign, like uh, uh, guarding the boxes, moving here, moving there, feeding the people who are going to, you know, your campaign agents and the rest of it. And that I think should be enough. But then at the same time, remember that uh, prior to those campaigns, you have been, uh, right now what is happening is, uh, you know the campaign that started. You go to fundraising, your opponent who is from the other side, uh, from NRM, is, is donating two million shillings. Even with my salary, the uh, magnitude have told me, just on the church, just on the religion, forget about the school, forget about the uh, fundraising for, for, for weddings, fundraising for, uh, for introduction, fundraising for national rights. Live along those lines. You cannot fund those activities with the money that we are getting and you can you survive. So you find that, uh, I mean, you, you, you already, it's, already, it's already simply too much. So 100 would be enough if we are only funding the other activities that I talked about first. But of course, without that one, then uh, the, uh, when you add on this other expenditure, it goes into, it could even go to billion because it depends on, on who your competitor is. And of course, Sometimes it also depends on the character, on your previous work, and a lot of other initial activities. Because then you, you would find that people will eat their money and then say, vote for you if they think you have done well and you are a good candidate. But uh, that one now is for specific constituencies. Some constituencies, definitely, that one doesn't work. You find that it is, becomes simply too much. And uh, I've, I've had an example where somebody uh, changed, uh, somebody was given 20,000, and I was telling her, Susan, why don't you give this candidate? And the, uh, the level of literacy is just too high in the village. Somebody said, yeah, you know, if I don't vote for him, what if he doesn't see my vote in the box? You, you can see that. <laughs> and that one, uh, because he cannot reject the money because maybe he has not touched 20,000 in six months. Mm. And uh, he also sees so is also so illiterate. And I think even the electoral commission, for example, it should be now educating the people about the roles of, of parliament, it should be educating the people about the electoral processes. So that by the time we are there, people know that uh, the, the the candidate cannot know who voted for him. It is only the end result that pushes him to parliament. But it, it, they keep the information to themselves so that they can now take advantage of the literates. It is, it, is, it is too much. It's yeah. too much. The other question is: uh, Is it necessary to regulate the amounts of money in campaigns? I think it is. Yes, it is. But as I said, uh, uh, you might make the laws, but remember that the parliament will make the laws, and after parliament has made the laws, then the laws are supposed to be implemented by the executive, and then of course uh, guarded by the uh, judiciary. I think now. What if we go into the campaign and we have said our members of parliament are not supposed to donate anything? Hmm? Now, how do you now you, 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 you get somebody donating from the other side, you take him to police, the police is by the president or by the NRM, you go to the judiciary, it's also by the other side, and either the case takes too long and it is useless after the election, or they, they, they have a, a loop for where they say, you, you know, you, you know what happens in law. That you know this, this case it was not got so far, maybe you take it back, and they keep putting up the lame tactics to get things working in favor of them. So you might think that, I mean, uh, it's definitely it would work if, for example, um, the law was for everybody. 
it's not skewed to some other people. So the so that if they catch you and then they publish it and then they cancel your candidacy, then people will say, I think it cannot work. Is it possible in Uganda? I don't think it is. It is not possible. Because as I said, all the other arms of government are controlled by the president. Even parliament by the other moment. In fact, our inertia today is if we fail to capture the president, then we should capture the parliament. If we could have, say, about 250 strong opposition MPs, we are done. Because then we can pass the laws. By the time we enter the next elections, the level will be ground, or the, the ground will be leveled, and then we can now play. But today, you, you go to shoot, and then you find the goalpost shifted. Mm. And you don't know what to do. <laughs> it becomes straight, it becomes a problem. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Gabriel is asking you what happened to good leaders who do not have that kind of money. Yeah, because you know, if, if the, the good leaders who don't have that kind of money, I mean, they, they, they don't even start. They don't even start. What else would you do? Because if you don't have money, uh, at least even for the basics, but even if you have, the, you have money for the basics, you need to have the extras for the other extras that your friends are also competing for. And it becomes a bit tricky, very, very tricky. And of course, given that the, uh, the other arms of government also are not with you, 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 you need a, a, a very, very strong thing. So what happens is that uh, we have uh, aspects MPs in Parliament. I'm not saying that the central Parliament is full of them. I could be one of them. I have no problem. <laughs> but uh, that is exactly what happens. That people who are not supposed to come to Parliament come to Parliament. Those ones who are supposed to be in Parliament don't come to Parliament. I think the, was it was it uh, who was that? Uh, it was, I think it was Patrice, remember, who said that the people with ideas are not in government, and the people without ideas are the ones in government. And the fallacy is that uh, uh, when we are electing, unfortunately, we elect the people without ideas into government. And that's exactly what happened. And that is exactly the process because the people without ideas have the money. And the laws are not protecting those ones without the money to actually go into parliament. You see? Yes. It's, it becomes really tricky. We have a question from Mutitsi, but you are you are you in favor of limiting election spending? Yes, I am. Yes. Definitely I am. I'm in favor of limiting uh, election spending because that is the key to having good leaders. So that uh, those ones so that the government knows now that even if uh, it brings if it doesn't bring uh, 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 capable politicians, mm. they will not go through because the new people will now be elected not uh, because of money, but because of what they want. And of course, the other thing is, it is also very, very, very important that the government and the electoral commission educates the people. You see? There, are, there's no, there is no uh, civic education, there is no electoral education. People are ignorant of what, about what they're supposed to do. You see? Why is that happening that way? It is deliberate. In my opinion, it is deliberate. The government is deliberately keeping us in the dark so that it can uh, maneuver and, and 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 go into all places. Otherwise, uh, it won't will, 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 will happen. There's another question here. From Nelson Lukaku. Uh, I don't know. You're saying uh, what is spent approximately on the middle on water bill? Are you? Are you saying that he spent uh, he spent approximately two hundred million on voters' bribery? Did I, did or I say what? that? I didn't say it. I didn't say I spent money on bribery. I didn't. I said I didn't bribe anybody. And luckily enough, I said I was I had been in leadership positions and I had been on several two times and several for financial planning as a three. I'd been on the council for the district. And uh, I had done too much. In fact, what happened is that between 2001 and 2011, when I went back to the LC3 offices to become Secretary of Financial Planning, mm. people suffered because when I was still in leadership, I would make sure that the roads are motorable and uh, things are working. I would make sure that the power lines are safe and uh, I would actually advocate. In fact, one time I spent two days in the uh, Umeme offices and told the gentleman, Every day I'm going to come here at eight 
and the leaf when you are closing. Now, on the third day, if you do, I've not done nothing or not promised, promised anything, you will have to lock me inside here. And that's when they woke up, and the next day they break holes and we come to all place with that. So, what I'm saying is, uh, people appreciated what I, what I was doing, mm. and they said, I think that is the leader. And that's how I, I said So, I, I didn't bribe anybody. I think that is, uh, I don't know who, who gave him that one. Uh huh. This way, if a law is passed inviting, uh, limiting the amount of of, uh, of the amount the candidate can spend in an election, how is it? Can this be measured or traced? Or and traced? You know, it's that's what I'm saying. The, the law, the law is uh, is uh, would not be. It, it's it would be difficult. It would be difficult implementing that one because uh, the laws are not. Uh, the, 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 the keepers of the laws are, are, are not are not are not good. I think there's a better word instead of good. They 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 are not committed. Mm-hmm. They, they would definitely uh, maneuver for the other group because they're the people. Oh, who give them the their interests. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And this one is uh, if MPs are, are complaining about commercialization of election, why don't MPs are not close to curb this this trend? You know, that is a very simple one because uh, we would like to enact laws, hmm? but then the the parliament is so skewed the other side that uh, even the laws are not brought because you must have uh, you must have heard that the 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 the, the, uh, the right honourable speaker was requesting the government said to bring the laws and put them on the floor. When you take a, a private member's bill, it will not save the truth because, you know, the, the rules uh, are such that you have a private member's bill, they could give you leave to go and publish it up. And when you deliver it to, uh, to parliament, to the floor, these people, will the, the speaker will give it to government to handle. And then, and then they will have to keep it there. So the, the laws are skewed, and and it becomes very really difficult. In acting. And that is that's what I'm saying. And and even if they come on the floor, you see, if they're still using the same money to break the, the, the MPs. To, like for example, this Koji Kwataka thing, the age limit. We needed 19 people to win, to take it. I mean, to to throw the whole thing out. But six of them had been in prison. Four of them had been locked out, and uh, of about 35 NRM, NRM MPs eh, who are supposed to vote for us, we are bribed and they didn't come. You see what I mean? So, because at the time when we reached the voting, we knew we had the whole thing organized and we knew we were winning. But with this destabilization, the destabilization, there was no way to win. So what I'm saying is, uh, we could start enacting the laws, but then getting the laws to go through is very difficult. That's why I'm saying that if we fail to capture the presidency this time, then we should concentrate on making sure that we have as many strong opposition politicians as possible in parliament, and that way, that way it becomes easy to do what? To enact the laws. Remember that the, the speaker is actually in parliament, isn't it? So if we are a 200, 250 strong, uh, strong MPs. We could even impeach the speaker and tell her, if these laws don't go through, we impeach you. But this, this, it is not possible because the majority is the other side and they have been brave because politics has been, has been monetized. This is difficult. So basing on what you have explained before you go to current be around that mm. question, who are the problem? Are they, are they the MPs or the voters that makes electoral process very complicated and um, campaign is financed? No, um, I think the problem is the leadership of the government because that's what the government wants. And, uh, because I imagine, Honor, because as I you, told you in, in particular, yeah. can come up with the, you call it a bill or what? You come up with we, do not, we have come out with bills and, like for example, there's a bill that uh, we had pushed and uh, it was blocked. Like, because we now think that the president fears to go because the law says that after the president says he can be sued. So we had wanted to bring a law that protects him so that even after he has left, he's not sued. And then we can, so that the country can move forward, so that he lives to see a good, a good government living. And then uh, it was thrown out. 
it is not easy. And uh, and of course, that one goes with the uh, denial to educate the population about all these things so that they can defend for themselves or fend for themselves. And then, of course, bribing the MPs and they are blindfolded. They, they, they just, you, you know, I, I hear that in the ninth parliament, 80% did not come back. That's because of that. And they, you wait for this parliament. We don't know what's going to happen. If they don't use a lot of money, we're going to see 90% not coming back because they have been brave and actually people are not feeling good. And maybe that's, that's the other way. What is happening today with Bob Wayne, is an indicator that the population is not happy. Because seriously speaking, um, if Bob Wayne, how did he come? Eh? Would, under normal circumstances, would he have taken over the state? Wouldn't. It's just that the people are now people are now looking for anybody who can who can give them hope. Yes, you see? And and, and as I've been saying, uh, one, the ninety percent of the people of the population has not reached senior sense. You see? Because in you remember that we had six hundred and seventy thousand sitting P seven. But in Seven years ago, 1.3 million students entered P1. Where, where is the other? You are going to see that two years down the road, A level, the ones who have sat senior four today, they will not be more than 350. You see? In senior four, six, they will not be 120. So by the time one week is senior six, they are 90% is out of school, they have no jobs. But even those ones who are who have been in the in the in, in the university? They have no jobs now. Can you say that Bob Wayne is uh, not uh, lucky? He has the mercy for following him. <laughs> yes, we have questions from Karen Pieranga. Yes, so now well, you go through those expenses of charges because school fees and the like because you promise to do almost everything for them in your campaigns. No, we don't. I never promised them anything. I'll bring for you a plane, I'll bring for you a no, you, railway. I, those ones who do that, uh, but then you know, it is very simple. I am a product of good deeds. I was not supposed to, because my father died when I was two and a half years, and I was, I was the only born in my family. My mother was so poor, we were living in a grass thatched house, which was also burnt by a bad person. Now, Brother then picked me up and said, No, this student is good. I think let's educate him. Now, if I am a member of parliament, do I have to promise that I will educate the people? I don't have to promise. You just see that the government has actually abandoned their roles. And they, you, you, you take Peter and you say, for example, just go back and look at President Museven, the way he came. Do you think if the system was today, would he have been president? He wouldn't have been. The system is such that government is supposed to give an equal opportunity for everybody to study. So if there's no opportunity, so we keep picking those ones that are really poor, and then we say now, maybe this one will be future president. You just keep on helping. You don't have to promise. I mean, as an MP, can you see somebody dying, and then you just keep quiet because it's not your role? Because you didn't promise it? So it's not about, it's not about promising. I didn't promise roads, but I'm, I'm, I'm saying, Government has promised that it's going to work on the Sabala Road because I have told the government that you, all, you have refused to, to handle your role. Your role is to make that road. And I've argued the case and they are now saying this. Now that's my role, to argue and talk and uh, defend the rights of the people. And as you defend the rights of the people along the way, you find people who are dying, you find people who have no money to take their dead bodies to the village. And then you, what do you do? You have to assist because they're the people. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do it, those people take advantage and then start pumping in money. And then you're also not there. Mm -hmm. And when you, they come to parliament, they just make their money and then go and people will not have the road. 15 years down the road, actually not 15, 30 years down the road, that road, Usabara Road, should have been men. Mm -hmm. And it's because somebody has now started shouting that they have woken up and said, I think we'll make them. You see what I mean? That means previously people were not bad. So it's not about, uh, it's not about uh, a promising. Like, for example, if you people followed my uh, campaign, I never promised anything. Mm. Yes. Yomba is asking you, how do you finance your campaign? I hope you answer that. You talked about it. Yeah, how do I finance my campaign? Mm. From private sources. What do you do? The Democratic Party gave me just that three million shillings for nomination. And then the rest, I 
I, I saved, I had the few things and I sort of uh, maneuvered my, my investment portfolio, sold a piece of land here and then, and, and I moved forward. And then you are going to say, why do you do that if you think you're not going to benefit? But then, if I don't do that, I will be the only rich person in the area and, and I want everybody to come up because if you are the only person who is well off, then that means you are not protected because the other even if even when the thieves come to you, people will not protect you. They will say, "Oh, you're that one is a rich man." And so you have to make sure that everybody comes up, and you have you, you only have to make sure when you have when you have the infrastructure in place, when you have things moving, and everybody becomes rich, and then you live comfortably together. And that way, uh, if I've reached my sixty-year plus years, and uh, I have, I think I have almost everything that I can live the next twenty years with my investment. What is wrong with me? Investing a little bit more into society, come to parliament, and then make sure that everybody also lives well. You see what I mean? I think that is good. Um, what is there uh, before you answer that question, mm -hmm. there was a survey done by uh, Alliance for Campaign Financing and Monitoring, mm -hmm. ACTIM, mm -hmm. and one of the issues that came out is some members of parliament, out of 185 asked by their organization, mm. some of them, some percentage say, during campaign, mm. it is necessary that a candidate declares the source of his or her funding. Mm. In your view, is that a good one? Yes, why not? Why? Because um, we don't want you to, to steal and uh, we don't want undue influence into the campaigns. Uh, for example, if, I think if uh, my contestant declares and he says he has uh, that money, mm -hmm. then if he spends more, we we'll ask, where does it come from? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if the president now starts financing everybody, we'll have the, uh, just like now, he has the parliament himself. You see? So, and, and surely, if you don't have the money, what would you why people into campaigns? <laughs> So declare that I have enough money, and then we, so that when you go to parliament, we know you are not a pauper. You have you have a base on which to stand, and then you can now talk for the other. But if you go to parliament to talk, to, to pick money, to make money, then you are not going to work for the people. And that means uh, the people should not elect you, because you are not going to work for them. You are going to work for somebody who is going to give you money, and that's what is happening now. So it is actually, to me, it is good that that base is said and say yes. I understand the American presidency. You, you, you also have to have some base. Mm. If you don't have some base, you don't even start, which is quite good. Otherwise, uh, getting a very, very poor person into positions of responsibility is also, you know, I'm a Muganda. And uh, previously, you must have heard that uh, in Uganda, if you are a, a, a Sazaki chief, you are given a piece of land from which to earn money. You, as soon as the, 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 the king identifies that you're a good leader, he has also to make you rich <laughs> in order to be able to live <laughs> well. And then, otherwise, you are, you're going to be, uh, you're going to, uh, to, 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 to shame the institution of Kabakasha. So, the poor people coming to Parliament are going to shame the institution of Parliament because they will be uh, dancing to the tune of the people with the money, and that is the president. <laughs> you know, I've been here, people have been mentioning money, but I've never even been invited to an office to say, we have 300 million for you. They have never, because they know I cannot take it. If the president gives a promise to finance your campaign and ask you to cross to NRM, what would you do? I will agree with you. I will agree with you. Because I'm not going there to defend NRM, NRM policies, I'm there to defend the people's policies. I, I would definitely say, no, sorry, I am... I'm not going to do that, and the ideology I, see, I have is for the people and by the Democratic Party. Mm. So if the Democratic Party finances me, I have no problem, because we have the same idea. But I am, today, I'm very sure that NRM, NRM's ideology is not good, so I'm not going to accept that financing. But it looks like there's a, a, a lot of money being spent in during campaign, as you explained. Yeah. Now, how are you going to raise uh, 250 good oppositions if they don't have money. You know, <laughs> I, I, I'll just tell you that uh, the majority of the voters 
after the seven the five of the and those youths have no jobs mm. and those youths have no money mm. and uh, uh, the the you know why the president doesn't want us to go into uh, the people to tell them and say what we are talking about it's because we are going to open the eyes of the public so that they now vote wisely that is why he blocks us from actually talking i mean why does he block Bodwin from singing these songs are educative when he sang that song uh, and i'm saying and, uh, eh? and then he turned it to he turned it into uh and he says, and Now, you know, that song to me is educative. That when they give you power, don't use it. Not it's going to, eh? What it means is that, uh, uh, you know, there was that song when, where a girl was, in, was impregnated and then. Uh, Godwin was saying that she, he found her in Endeavor, in a bar, and asked her what happened. He said, Man, I, I got pregnant, I was just out of school, I'm now suffering. And he was telling the, 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 the girls, please, be careful when you're in school. You are going to be misled into these things. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, midway into the song, when we were at uh, One Love Beat, yeah. he said, let me turn around and uh, give you the other story of Chita Tata. Tata. Then he says, Chita Tata, I found him in Endeavor. He was a mechanic. Mm. The next time I see him, he was in a, in a marking the barracks. Mm. And that's the what happened. He told him, now, you know, I, I, I got into problems. I was given guns, and the guns mm. turned against me. Mm. And it is just that when you are given power, please use it properly. Mm. Otherwise, if you don't use it properly, it will turn against you. Wow. That is educative. That, that is the education that the president doesn't want people to know. Yeah? Because he used the same people to harass her. Who doesn't know that the teacher for so many years was harassing people in the in, in, in camp? Yes, we have a question from Kellen. Yes, yeah. I mean, um, Nelson Lepard. Yeah, do you think Uganda needs electoral reforms or civic education to leaders and lecturers about their roles? Yes, definitely we do. We do, and it is a must. And if we can have a very clear and a separate way of doing it without the government doing it, because the government does it, you know, it, when it goes into that civic education, it first of all picks its cadres, remember, and then the cadres also misinform the others. But if we could get, if we could get uh, completely independent bodies, and the government does not interfere with them, and if they go to the people and tell them exactly what they mean, what the member of parliament is supposed to do, how it, how to go into elections, what to expect, this and that, it will be very, very good, very, very good. But the problem today is that the government keeps interfering with specific education. This currently, how in how in your primaries you don't use a lot of money and voter bribery because before you contest with an NIM candidate, yeah, but, uh, but I don't know about the other, but in Democratic Party it's not there. Mm. It's not there. Like for example, no, you don't do primary. We do primary. Mm. Like for example, I think starting about March, we are going to start on the primaries to get the the, the village committees in place, mm. the parish committees in place, the Gombala committees in place, and then the constituency committees. And those constituency committees form the electoral college for electing. And in my position, I stood and everybody agreed. They said, no, this is our candidate. Mm. And I, did, I didn't spend a single shilling in those payments. And I was declared an opposition. And that was that, you see? But, uh, but the NRM, what happens in NRM is that it is actually a full campaign before the campaign. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Gabriel is saying. Uh, yeah. um, there is a saying that eat widely, yeah. but vote wisely. Oh, so what do you think? No, we have already, we have already told them that. We have, you know, there is a, there is a person, I'm, I'm not mentioning the name, who is actually paying. Uh, whenever he goes to church, he pays two million, he pays three million. And you know what the people are saying? We are going to eat the money, but we know where the votes are going to go. You see? And that's exactly what is that. Eat widely, but to go to wisely. And that one now goes with the civic education to tell the people what exactly they're supposed to do so that you eat the money. First of all, the money they eat. In my opinion, I cannot eat my personal money. 
and this shit I would like that. Or else I will not be of use to, to the restaurant because I will go to Paris in the name of I will have to put my money. But this is money that has been that is government money and the person is dishing it out as if because it's, it's not easy. Whether he, he loses or not, it doesn't matter. Yeah? That is what, that is why we have that problem. But uh, if you have your money, for example, if I save 150 million to go campaign, I cannot just be shot like that. I cannot. So these people, uh, that one is a good one from uh, government. In South Africa, mm -hmm. there is what they call the campaign list. Campaign list. Yes, where each party look for their candidates right from the grassroots up to the president, uh, president's level. Mm. So if, say, Democratic Party has the highest number of candidates, they can determine their presidents from there. So their presidents from there. So can the same thing happen uh, in Uganda? Can you say that again? In South Africa, mm. there's what they call the campaign list. Yeah. The parties campaign within themselves. Mm -hmm and they prepare their candidates for the national level. Mm -hmm. So in Uganda, can that happen where you line up your, your candidates right from grassroots to president's level? Mm -hmm. And then it is upon that that the parties now campaign for their candidates. There's no direct contact with the, with the voters the way it happens in Uganda. Oh. Your party campaigns for you. Your DP campaigns for you. I don't know where Chakulani comes. His party campaigns for him. Maybe like Honorable Kotokong, NRM campaign for him. Something like that. But you don't have real contact as a member of parliament with them, with your voters. Well, I am. Um... That's a good question. That's a good uh, suggestion. That's a good proposal. That's, uh, I think, a good thing to do. And uh, uh, my college started about 1980. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think at that time it was about that. Mm -hmm. You would see yeah. the PC campaigning for its candidates. Yes. You would and see it's the financed by yeah. the party. And it's financed by the party. Yes. Yeah? And at that time, uh, party uh, parties were financed, I think, externally. I remember. Only yeah? that new foundation. That, uh, the, 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 it was a DP, yeah, the, yeah, DP. Yeah. and they were finding funding and they would present the budget and the budget was definitely uh, and I think that was good but I think it is a bit difficult now because the parties don't have the money actually we are financing the parties and that is exactly where you see that the Democratic Party has no allegiance most of the members of the Democratic Party MPs may not have as it's a good allegiance to the party because mm -hmm. the party did not put in front of But NRM, they, are, they, are, they have an allegiance to them because NRM funded their work. So I, I think that would be extremely very good and I uh, I would be very advocate for it. I, I only wish I could get money and go and look at the system and see whether we could bring your Yeah, that is what happens in South Africa. Would you find some funding for me to go and spend a week in South Africa? <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I, I, I look at the system and say, it works because I think it is good. Yeah. Because then, because then it, 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 starts, it stops being individualistic. Mm. That as soon as we have identified that person, then the party says that is ours and we move. And they finance. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, El Karen is yeah. asking you as a legislator, do you have a duty to educate voters on the rules of an MP? Yes, we do. Yeah, but then, uh, well, I can do it, and then NRM would not. I think some members of parliament would not be would not like to do that because it would be it would work against the, the it would open the eyes of the other people and say, oh, so that is what it is. So okay, but then for, because for them they want that to understand way of doing things. Otherwise, I well, I normally do it and say it. Yes. Is from truth. Mm -hmm. Just for that, mm -hmm. meant, I would like a law that regulates campaigns. One that uh, tells candidates how many cars to have, how many times to campaign, right, to, right down to how many assistants the military can have. This would level the playing field for those with ideas to find their way into parliament. I think that is okay. I would have no problem because that means I would have the level of the ground mm -hmm. and everybody would be the same and many people would have to pick from those different kinds of people. 
Uh, if the candidate violated the rules of campaign standard, well, where all could see what uh, all of men uh, cannot be easily. And what is that? Can you say that? that be good. Okay. If a candidate, if a violated, candidate has violated the rules on campaign time, on campaign times, no. where all could see what of money, which cannot be easily be seen. Do you, do you understand? Gabriel, we request that you repeat your question. Honorable is not getting your question. So you can go to truth and mentors. Uh, what can we do about water protection? Not individuals, uh, individual, but at the polling station where they put in person the high bystanders to know or uh, uh, to know one's choice. Ah, well, I don't know. You know, that is interesting. Uh, what is happening in, in urban areas mm. is that the present system of voting mm. Eh, mm. ensures that the people are protected. For example, in my, in my, in my area, whether I'm voting from a person, you, you cannot see me. You put the person far away from me where people can see, and I think, and then I go to that. But then what happens is that in the villages, Okay. They, are, they are manipulated. They say put the voters, they said you can see what is happening. So, and then they, they are intimidated actually. You know? But there are that some voters who are helped in ticking. Yeah, but don't you look like at that? The elderly, those who are very old. Yeah, but then the law is very clear mm -hmm. that if you have got to be helped, then you have to identify the person. The police. Hmm? The, or, police yeah, or the police. But then uh, the, the, if you refuse that, this one is not going to help you. You are, you are free to do that. So. It's just, as I said, it's just what I know. People have not been educated on, uh, on what to do. <laughs> the law is actually very clear on that one. Yeah. And uh, are, you, uh, are your people honest with you? And if so, can you share with us some of the threats made to them by candidates who have attempted to bribe them? Uh, I don't know. What is that? And there are certain challenges that uh, they might have faced through threats. You know, I give you an example mm -hmm. of a story in in up country where, on the eve of election, mm -hmm. a candidate took a laptop like this, placed the camera, put money here, mm -hmm. and was telling the voters that I, I mean, he paid the voters. 2020 20 or 10 10 each. After leaving, he informed the voters that, do you know what? As you have been signing here, they were watching you from state house. So if you fail, your face is already there. And the voters were quaking. They, you know, they were intimidated. They had to vote the person. So that could be something that Truth is talking about. You know, it's interesting. I think I, I, I can see two issues here. One, what we've been talking about, the voter intimidation. So that the people cannot be so intimidated. Then secondly, if you think you're intimidated, and I think that they're even, after, after that intimidation, they also fear to go to the police because even the police is the other side. Otherwise, if you go to the police and report it, it will be very easy. And what happens is that if that one has been uh, found out, mm -hmm. then it cannot happen again. You know, uh, I think, I, I, I hope it will not happen again, but uh, we were in uh, the late back by the Kerala's campaigns. Mm -hmm. It was a by-election, and we went there. And you know, we found that some people were voting twice. But then we had no way of actually identifying and knowing how it was it used up there. So somebody, we, 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 we planned mm -hmm. and uh, got one of our own and said, you have to front yourself as somebody's going to, to, to support them. Then we got him, we roughed him up, of course, without beating him, handed him over to the police and uh, we told the reporters, of course, the radios and the TVs were there, mm -hmm. that somebody has been caught trying to vote twice. We are on. It's, I'm telling you, you have to front it, mm -hmm. and then, and then it will was flash all over the country. Now the others wanted to come because it was real, but we we couldn't. <laughs> yeah, they said, they said, eh, I think <laughs> when I go, I might not survive. I'm not going to go back. You can see what happened. <laughs> so it's so some 
intimidation are not genuine. Yes, because I mean, what 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 else do you do? If you are doing it, you you have to also find a way to shut it out. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's like a, I found people after voting. You know, they had planned in my campaign that they will uh, stuff the boxes, then create some scaffold at the attending center, and say we we count your voting. Then they had by that time they would have stuffed the the, the, the boxes again. So somebody tipped me off, and we found a whole police station. Code on off by army men with the guns. And they were refusing me to go inside. I told them, if you want, I'm a candidate, shoot. I just went through with my people and we found them ticking. They had to be dispersed, like enough of these people that had come, we took photographs, they ran away. And that's when we heard that, and in another station, we're also doing the same. By the time we reach all the books as well, there, but they are not people. So this is what they told them that <laughs> we are dead. <laughs> you, saw, you can see it is uh, 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 intimidation will always be there, but then you have to be firm, very firm. You have to know your rights. Mm. And if you know your rights, nobody, what happens? That is exactly why so the president is not winning in Kampala, the president is not winning in most urban centers, because the people know what to do. But in the villages, even the cows vote. Have you heard about that? Yeah? You find that. And then the other thing that I would, look, I would also like to warn the, the voters about. I mean, you find that an area you have, uh, let's say, 482 voters on the register. And then only six they come to vote. I mean, the government has the powers, the recognition is there, the police is there, everybody is there. What they do is to fill up. <laughs> so what would happen is that everybody come and vote and then those people have no gap to fill. it makes a lot of sense so all that goes into water education please come and vote show your, your right show your choice show your preference and then we move forward yeah so if electoral let me say campaign financing is not regulated what are the challenges that as political parties in position what challenges the, the, do you if, see? if it's not regulated, the challenges are that we shall continue in the same steps because um, the, the, the only difference will be that the people are, are, are more educated. And of course, this will not last forever because you can see, I, recently I went back to my village. For over the 30 years, they have been voting NRM candidates for LC1. And we have been talking and talking, you know, these people, and they were saying, no, but these are the when I went back after the LSU, the whole village now is deep. So it will have to stop <laughs> somehow, something. Because when people, I mean, people have been oppressed. And you keep telling them that by electing this government, by electing these people, that is exactly what is the, that is why you are bringing up these problems. You see? I mean, for example, which government does not really care about these people on the rest of I will give you an example. Yesterday we were in Parliament. And we were talking about the Organization of Bill of Standards. And it was just too much. I mean, you have allowed me to import. Uganda Revenue Authority has taken my tax, my money in taxes. I put the shops, the, 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 the merchandise in the shops. And then the police comes and says, these are fake. And you take them, and you have not refunded my money. I would expect that the Ugandan National Bill of Standards, if they don't have enough staff, like they say, then they use the present staff to go to the countries where they, 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 they the things are originating and tell them you are giving us fake goods. So we say, Pakistan don't import in Uganda. Mm -hmm. uh, Hong Kong import because your goods are good. And that way, those people we can control it from there. You can see what happens. But then you, 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 allow, people, you allow people to import, they use the money, they borrowed money from the banks, and then you, you, you capture their merchandise when it's actually your duty to make sure that these things imported are good. Mm. Before you go to Cheng Xiongbia's question, yes, uh, is there any country in the world that has regulated campaign financing? Apparently, you know, you gave me this topic uh, about, is it about yesterday even? Yeah. I didn't have time to surf. Mm. So I, uh, I'm not aware. Maybe you could help me to surf. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> then we can see what's happening. I remember you'll continue asking people, uh, uh, answering people for the next one week. So you have uh, more questions? You have about two no, questions? No mm -hmm. some, pe some, pe some MPs give voters money to influence them because the voters demand to what extent is this true? Yes. Mm. Actually, the voters demand 
and that is because you know it is interesting uh, this is why i say that uh, i think that, that question keeps coming back that the voter uh, uh, you know uh, telling the voters their rights and what the MPs are supposed to do is very important now the general feeling in the population is that you are going to parliament to get a job and make a money for yourself. Is it? Yeah, sure. Now, that way, that is why those people say, you give us money since you're going to eat. <laughs> <laughs> but then people don't know that. And, and by the way, that could also be the reason why we are getting high salaries. Is it? Sometimes I wonder, I say, but yeah, it's quite a lot of money. But then when you look at it, seriously speaking, my net every month is much less than what I used to get way before I, before I became an editor. So I'm actually in the negative. And that is because we are doing things that we are not supposed to do. And that is, to answer his question, people think that we are there to eat and make money. So you give us, give us. And that is, even, that is, even, that is even more dangerous. Because after, if I, after I've put your my vote, would you demand the road? Would you demand that I fight for you for uh, to, to, to make the road better or make the hospital better? I paid. So let me refund. Let me get back my money. <laughs> it's it's the deal is very bad. Yeah. Government, a woman, candidates were not allowed to campaign beyond 7 p.m. But they uh, did, and nothing happened to them. How will uh, rules on money that extend its hands under tables be enforced? In Buganda, we were saying that uh, before the fish rots for it, it's the head that starts. It starts with the head to rot. And that's exactly what it was. Mm. The head is rotting. And that is exactly why we have this problem. Because if, if the police is vigilant and it is fair, and we report this one campaign before, after seven, and they handle him and actually cancel his candidate. The next person will know. I have clear evidence that the, those people going beyond the seven are in Ireland. I will say it very clear. Otherwise, if a DP candidate goes beyond the seven, you will sit here against his way. And, and that, that, that means we, we are not on level ground, and that is extremely very bad. Hmm? Thanks for the great work. Thumbs up. Oh, that's right. Thank you so much, Mike. Is it Millie, Epo? Mm. Uh, can you?